one of the best ways to show appreciation and hospitality to your church guests is to give them a gift. However, I think we've all had those Christmases where your spouse or your kids or maybe a white elephant gift exchange type scenario where you get a gift and you're like, this isn't what I asked for. This isn't anything that I could ever use. And the gift just kind of gets overlooked. I think we've had, I know me per- personally, I try to surprise my wife and my kids with one surprise present that was not on their list. It's almost a, a Nava tradition because my mom does the same thing for me. And it's about half and half. It's half, oh, this is very helpful. I never would have asked for this. And half, why did you get this for me? Can we please take it back? I want your guest gift to be the former. I want them to say, wow, you thought about me. It feels like you understood what I need. And I'm actually going to use this. So in this video, I'm going to give you three questions that you need to ask yourself when you're preparing your guest gift. And a bonus one, if you have a guest gift right now, I'll give you a question to ask regarding, you know, is your current guest gift a usable? And you ask these three questions. This will help you, number one, understand what you can do going into next year or just even right now as you, we prepare for the holidays as the time of this video. So you can have a great guest gift that not only just checks a box, but really helps someone feel understood, helps them feel welcome, thought about, cared for, and nurtures them to continue engaging with you and connecting with you so you can nurture that discipleship-focused relationship. And if we haven't met before, my name is Justin Nava, founder of Nava Church Marketing, and I want your church to be better known. I want your church to be the best known, just like people know where the Walmart is in town and when it's open and what to do when you go there. I want people to know where your church is, when you're open and what to do or what to expect when they go to you. And when they do go to you, you should have a gift that helps them feel understood, appreciated, showcases Christ-like hospitality more than anyone else. And if you want more tips about not just welcoming guests, but everything you need to know on the road to becoming the best known, like and subscribe so you don't miss a video that we do here on this channel. Now I'm gonna go into the three questions you need to ask about your guest gifts, but first let's start with a bonus question. I'm gonna give you the bonus up front because that's just how I like to do it. Yes, kids, let's eat some chocolate cake before our dinner. And that's looking at your current guest gift. Number one, a simple question to just look at it is, would I use this if I was visiting this church? I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a church and I got a really beautiful guest guest. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a church, visited, got a guest gift, and it's in a beautiful bag. I can tell it's like they embossed it. It's got shiny foil letters on it. It looks beautiful. And inside, it's mostly empty. And I can tell they spent more on the appearance of the gift than the gift themselves. Another thing that kind of like I don't need is another journal. I get journals from a lot of conferences. I get journals from work. I get pens. I got plenty of pens. I, th- I personally think you can use pens. I don't mind getting a pen. But the question is, would you take this home and actually use it? And I'm not talking about brochures. You can stick a brochure in there. That's fine. But if you want someone to feel appropriately appreciated, you should give them something that they'll use. And this is part of where knowing who you are uniquely equipped to serve comes in. Because based on who you're uniquely equipped to serve, God is going to bring you more of those people and you should show that you understand their needs. So are you understanding their needs or are you just understanding the need to provide some kind of guest gift? So that's the most important question is, number one, would I even use this? Are your staff using it? Are your staff using your church pins at home? Are your staff using their journals? Can you walk into your church office, not counting the stack that's waiting to be bagged? Can you find those gifts being in use on people's desks in their car or in their home? If not, then it might be time for a guest gift upgrade. So three questions you need to ask about the guest gifts. And the first question actually doesn't have much to do with the guest gift. It has to do with your church. And it goes back to that belief that every church is uniquely equipped to uniquely reach a unique group of people. God planted your church, whether it was last year, last decade, last century, to uniquely reach a group of people. If not, you should be a part of another church. There should just be one universal city church that everyone goes and works and pastors under. But you can't be everything to everyone at all times. Only Jesus Christ can do that. Your church is uniquely equipped to uniquely reach a unique group of people. A great example of this is language. You can't speak all languages and serve all people uh, at the same time. So you focus on the language that you are best equipped to teach, preach, and disciple in. So the question is, who is your, your church uniquely equipped to reach? Or who is God calling you in revitalization or replanting to reach? If that's young families, So to create the proper guest gift, you need to answer that question. A lot of churches say we want to reach young families, but I look at their guest gift and it has nothing for the kids and it's things that a normal 20, 30 year old couple would not ever need. Or it's something like a nice notebook. Well, which one of us gets the nice notebook? If you want to reach young families, provide a notebook for mom and dad, something for the kids. If you're equipped more for the blue collar worker, then what are some of the things that they need? 
You know, they're in and out of the house a lot. They, you know, a magnet is something that they could use, a, a little clip, a bottle opener if you want to party that way. <laughs> when I used to work at an agency that provided printables for churches, I really wanted to sell some bottle openers. We did sell some pocket knives for Father's Day, but I never got the bottle openers uh, printed. Anyways, they might need to-do lists. I mean, hey, they will need more pins. They're walking around, they're medical, they're traveling, they're in the field, a lot of good pins, a lot of things like that that can help them. And maybe you're in a high-tech industry town and God's calling you to speak to the intellectuals, the people that are a little too smart or think they're too smart for God. And so maybe you include a resource that helps them think through some of the questions that science can't answer, like why. You know, science tries to answer how and when, but not a lot of why. And so maybe you can include some resources there. And again, focus on the family, focus on the grown-ups. And you include something like a little keychain flashlight. My, my wife loves that. She doesn't work in the lab anymore. But sometimes they need some little tchotchkes like that, little reminders. So just ask that question, who are we best equipped to serve? That serves as the foundation for your guest gift. Which is question number two, if you haven't guessed it already, based on who we're called to serve or who we want to serve more of, what are some of the things that would help them feel understood and appreciated? We don't want to just give gifts, again, for the sake of giving gifts. Like a gift exchange, I come home and I didn't really want this thing in the first place. It goes in the closet, it goes in the pantry, it goes in the junk drawer, and I throw it away next year. We want your gifts to be actually usable. So once you know who you're called to serve, you can start to think of some of the things that these people could need. So for example, if we're busy professionals, a magnet calendar that we can stick on the fridge kind of helps just to be able to go up and say, oh yeah, the 17th is a Saturday. Or maybe it's a little flip printable calendar and they, you know, you just, hey, we can write on it. Maybe you serve older folks. Not every church needs to ignore old people and go for the young people, right? Sometimes you want to create disciple makers to disciple the generations in their own family. And so what are some of the resources that they may need? Maybe it's family activities. Maybe your guest gift, when grandparents visit your church, it's a guest gift made to bring them closer to their family. And a great way to start with this is just look at some of the things that your people are already doing or using. So if you got a lot of home cooks, maybe you're in a homeschooler town and you got a lot of homeschool families, you know, what are some of the things that they're using a lot of? Maybe you create a unique church spice mix, like a seasonal, and it's something that you can provide not just for your church, but for guests as well. And the number three question that you need to ask, and this is a question that so many churches frustratingly don't ask, but you can't get very far unless you ask this question. What is our budget? There's no point in brainstorming. In fact, I probably should have moved this question up first. There's no point in brainstorming and coming up with all these beautiful gifts. Like we want to give everyone a pocket knife. That's great, but pocket knives can be expensive, like 20, 30 bucks just to get a basic engraved pocket knife with your church name. Same thing with pens. You can get a bunch of cheap pens or you can get some nice pens. And by the way, get the nice pens. So once you know your budget per gift, that'll help you brainstorm a little bit more about within the boundaries of what you can do. For example, if you want to cater to families, but you don't have a large guest gift budget, maybe you got like $500, well, you're not going to be able to get a whole bunch of things, but what you can do is get a bunch of Mylar bags, get some decorations, get some cookie mix or make your own pancake mix and put that in a bag and offer it as a guest gift. We think family is important. We love families to spend time together. So here's a little devotional, here's some pancake mix, and just have a little talk about the Bible over some pancakes on us. And yeah, you can include an informational pamphlet, but knowing that you have a small budget lets you really think outside the box of how can we serve the 20 to 30 families we're going to get throughout the year of our small church. I hope you're a small church if you only have a $500 guest gift budget. How can we serve the 20 or 30 families? Well, with that $500, you can go quite a bit with a devotional and some pancake mix. <laughs> and if you have a larger budget, then you can splurge and really treat your guests well. You can get the nice bag. You can get the nice devotional journal. You know, maybe people in your area, you're called to serve to be the answer, to showcase Christ as the answer to anxiety. And so maybe you have a nice devotional uh, with verses about anxiety. Then, of course, a pen to take the notes. And maybe a little stress ball. You know, hey, just squeeze this th during your prayer. When you're stressed, squeeze. Like, this, this things, once you actually sit down and answer these questions, you can kind of figure out, okay, well, now we've got $5,000 to get gifts for the 100 to 200 new people that are going to come through our church. Like, now you can actually work within the boundaries and create an actual guest gift that's going to be actually useful and actually show hospitality to the people and show that you actually understand them. This is very passionate to me because I think, especially as a marketing agency, we work real hard to bring people to our clients' churches through SEO, advertising, their website, and all that. And so I want to make sure that when we bring people to church, they are welcomed 
accordingly. And I'm not saying you have to have a guest gift. I'm not saying that if you have a, a guest gift that's not 100% aligned with these questions that you're doing a bad job and you should nix it entirely. But as with anything, we want to iteratively improve everything we do as a church because we want to do everything with excellence. Pastors need to live above reproach. Your congregation needs to be outpouring with Christ's love. And I think the same thing goes with hospitality. When someone comes to our church, their gift should not be an afterthought. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you love your church guest gift? If so, leave it down. Let's talk about like what are some ideas that people have and other people can bounce some other ideas off. Or, you know, what are the answers to your questions? Who is your church equipped to serve? Uh, what what kind of things do they need? Or what kind of things would help them feel understood? Let's brainstorm together. One of the things that I want to see is more of us working together in community. You'll see some updates coming out for 2025 shortly that I'm very excited to share with you. But I'm not going to share it right now. For the meantime, comment below about your guest gift or guest gift, guest gift ideas and like and subscribe so you don't miss another video. God bless and I'll see you in the next video.